but other ones are stunning Escobar, forcing him to hold on. Now Escobar trying to come back and counter with a couple of lefts. Final 30 seconds of the sixth round. Make no question about it, though. Both guys still have plenty of power. Escobar, though, he's getting rocked a bit. He still can take his man out, I think, with a good left hand. Escobar leading with the left. Alvazar with a left and a right. And under 10 seconds in the sixth. And Friday night boxing's coming your way on USA. And we'll be back to Olympic. We're at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, California. Great building constructed in 1932 primarily for the Olympic Games. And here's what's going on tonight. Baldazar and Escobar. And here's some fast and furious action from round number six. Once again, I thought Baltazar won the round on the strength of his right hand, which he's brought into the fight finally. For the first four rounds, he was on vacation. You know, if you're a fight fan, you can't help but think about some of the great names that have tread this surface. The Olympic, Dempsey, Max Barrett, Primo Carnera, Lewis, Patterson, Liston, Frazier, Norton. Some of the really great ones. Kit Gavilan, Maxie Rosenblum, Fritzy Zivic. Boy, there's some good ones. And some good ones going on right now. Oh, you can't, off, you can't leave off my, one of my all-time favorites, Emil Griffith, what in this building. Emil Griffith. One of the all-time great fighters, five-time champion. Right now, he's in New York training a young heavyweight by the name of Bone Crusher Smith. He also trains Juan the Fourth, the featherweight champion. They've all been here. And these two young guys in the ring right now would like to be able to someday say, hey, I fought, did a great job in Olympic. They've got a good one going tonight. Frankie Baldazar in blue and Juan Escobar in white. Seventh round. Ooh, big left. Baldazar with a big left that time. He can take his man out. Escobar can take his man out. Both guys are still dangerous. One shot by either guy can do it. Baldazar with 25 knockouts. Escobar with 21. And I will say this, Escobar does not look to have the confidence in his eyes that he had in those first four rounds. He was showing no fear then, because he was landing repeatedly. Now you can see some fear in his eyes. He's not stepping into punches the way he was. Baldazar just missed with a wild left. Trying to go inside and down to the belly. Good left lead by Escobar. Baldazar comes right back with one of his own. Missing with a left again. Inside, then coming over the top with a left. That was a fine right jab to the belly by Balthazar. And I believe that those shots are starting to hurt Escobar. He looks a little soft in the midsection. Under a minute in the seventh round. Escobar had him halfway turned around. Over the top with a left. Oh, stand. He, Escobar just landed again with that left hand. On the, the bad right eye of Balthazar. Balthazar's right eye is now starting to discolor all the way down midway. Midway down that cheek. Well, I've been on their case on the corner of Balthazar. Since that happened, the injury happened in the second round. They are doing work on it, but I cannot tell if it's ice or they're using a cold coin or an end scroll device. It looked to me like they were just pressing on it, trying to get the fluid or what medical guys call an edema right out of there, moving the fluid right out of there. Round seven, 10 seconds remain. Eddie Doucette, Randy Gordon from the Olympic. And we're coming to you on the USA Network. We'll be back. Into the corner of Frankie Baldazar, the attending physician, Dr. Bernard Schwartz was over there to examine the eye. You can't get much closer than that. Some outstanding camera work by our crew here in Los Angeles at the Olympic Auditorium tonight. Look at that eye. Now, apparently, under that plum that we've been talking about under the eye, it has broken open. And actually, that's not bad because it's under the eye. The blood will drip down. But what's happened, because it broke open, a lot of that fluid will come right out. The pressure will be relieved. Looks like one of those old Jack Palance fight movies. Oh, yeah, or how about... Let's go back to Rocky. Remember when they slipped the eye? They don't do that. We're in round eight. And we're rolling along through our second fight on our Friday night card. Boxing on USA. Baldazar in blue. 
Juan Escobar in the white. I'm wondering if Frankie Balthazar's vision is affected. That right eye is nearly shut. It's a slit. I'm not sure he can see out of it. It's a tough spot to be in, too, because that's the eye that he's seeing a lot out of. And that and those leads coming in with the left, uh, being a left-hander, he's got to lead in with our right side. I'm surprised that Escobar is not pot shotting the eye more. He's just taking one jab at a time. Right there, that was a perfect opportunity for him. To the left hand to the eye, but he didn't. Escobar looks like he's slowing up just a little bit. Baldazar trying to be a a bit more of an aggressor here. Well, perhaps this fight says something about Juan Escobar because we talked before that he's been stopped on two occasions. He's a fast starter, but the two guys who stopped him stopped him in round eight and round ten. So perhaps the history of Juan Escobar is one to run out of gas as the fight goes on. Well, looking at your card, you had him in the first four rounds and Baldazar in the last three. The way this round is going, I think it's close, but I think Balthazar's in the lead. And if he wins this round on my card, this is an even fight. Eighth round, getting down to the final minute. Schedule 10 round here. Balthazar coming in, trying to go to the midsection again. Might not be bad strategy. Balthazar looks to be in a little bit perhaps a little tighter if you will well I think actually he might be in a little bit better shape and the thing that I think helped him a lot is so much of the sparring that he gets in the gym with so many good fighters including his brother they don't work that much anymore though because they have a tendency to beat up on each other that sibling rivalry well, you really don't know what Escobar is fighting with down in Mexico you don't have that many ways of staying in touch Baldazar's training up here in Los Angeles. Frankie got hurt there with a left hand to the eye, and he gets popped on that eye now. He feels it. The thing is discolored. For the next month, he's going to have a black eye. Coming down to the end of round eight. Two more rounds in this one. And then Tony Baldazar against Rocky Montoya on our Friday night card on USA. You know, Randy, we keep talking about the Olympic Auditorium and some of the names we mentioned. It'd be nice someday to be able to go back and do a where are they now type piece on some of these great names. Patty DeMarco. Remember these names when I was a kid. Sandy Sadler. Kid Gavilan. Boy, I love those names. Well, I'll tell you where Kid Gavilan is. He's down in Miami Beach hanging around the Fifth Street Gym. I see him down there occasionally. And another guy, Sandy Sadler, you just mentioned him. He's up training fighters in New York at Gleason's Gym on 30th Street. Sandy looks in fighting shape right now. That is Juan Escobar and Ricardo Maldonado working on him in the corner. Well, they had the uh, Parade of Champions here recently. Jaime Garza, Los Angeles, won the Super Bantamweight crown with a K over Bobby Berna. That was uh, June 15th, just a couple days ago. I'll get the plug in because I'm very proud to say that I did the very first story on Jaime Garza. Benny Giorgino convinced me about Three years ago, I've got a kid that's going to be champion. I did the story. He's a champion. You're big. This is your business. Randy Gordon, Ring Magazine, and we're around nine. Now it was just that Benny Giorgino convinced me to do it. He's a good talker, good self. <laughs> Randy Gordon, who I'm working with tonight, sees them all in this capacity. As an associate editor at Ring Magazine, he gets a chance to travel around and see the best, the up-and-comers. How would you rate these two? Well, I think that Juan Escobar has to get a little more stamina because for the first four rounds, it looked like he's going to knock Balthazar out. And as far as Balthazar, he's got to tighten up that defense a little bit, but there's nothing wrong with his heart. See, these guys are world-class fighters. They're not club fighters. They're world-class. He's got a movie look on him now. He's ready for Rocky IV. Ooh, the head of Escobar. He just came in. He didn't mean it. He went to throw a body shot, and he butted Balthazar. Escobar's face looks relatively unscathed, certainly in comparison with Balthazar. Balthazar has become much more aggressive. 
He'll throw his flurry and then cover up. He's smarting a much, he's fighting a much smarter fight now than he did the first four rounds. All of a sudden, this round looked like he got himself that second win that was lacking for the last four rounds. And on my unofficial scorecard, this is a, this is four rounds apiece. So this becomes a two-round fight. Escobar with a long overhand lead. And while it didn't look like it had a lot of impact, it's the kind of thing that's got a little pop behind it. Both these guys looking for those hooks. Balthazar with the right hook, Escobar with the right hook. Ninth round. Oh, good strong right right there by Balthazar, and he follows with another one. There's the hooks that we've been telling you about for the last five rounds now. Balthazar's been opening up with that right hand. He's trying to get his man out of there because that eye is in terrible shape. The right eye. He's got to keep that right hand up. Left hand hook. Missing. 